so it probably shouldn't have come up here with your seven year old. Right. I don't want people noticing me right now. My daughter goes to school right here. Right now, you're being arrested for child endangering um, at a felony level, okay? At a felony level? Yes. We expect our mothers to be kind, loving, and compassionate, willing to do anything to protect children. But unfortunately, there are some moms out there who don't put their child's safety first. We're highlighting seven times moms were questioned on body cam for all the wrong reasons. Welcome to After Hours, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Sam Goldberg. We begin today's episode in Connecticut. Police got a call in November 2023 that a mom had been acting erratically while dropping her daughter off at a local middle school. School officials were worried the child's mom might be intoxicated. I am still in line with the principal. She is still there. It looks like she may have dropped something in the vehicle. She got out. She's struggling. She got back in. Now the wipers are on. She has not left the driveway yet. The first responding officer goes to check on the driver, identified as Christina Morissette. Morissette admits several things to the officer almost right off the bat, including that her driver's license is suspended and she's undergoing treatment for drug addiction. Are you, hey, hey, are you okay? Are you okay? Yes, sorry, I'm just trying to... Do, do you have an ID? I do. Can I see that, please? Yeah, do you mind just rolling down your window for me? It's suspended. That's okay. That's yeah. all right. It's I don't... There's no, I'm not seeing anything on the, on the ground. What do you mean? Oh, what, what, what were you reaching down there for? My, I'm sorry, my, uh, piece uh, to my That's okay. We'll, we'll worry about that after. My piece can you, to my me, can you just turn off the car for me? It's hard to see, hear you over the over the radio, okay? Uh, here we go. Roger. I just took my methadone. You just took it? Yeah. How long ago? It, recently, so this is what I'm doing. So, I'm trying to connect the two. Yeah, that's okay. I don't want you to worry about your phone right now. I just, let's just get the ID, okay? Oh I, I do need your ID. I know. Okay. This is my daughter's school. I know, but we got to call and people are worried about you, so we need to make people sure you're okay. They were sitting outside because of this. Did they not see me? Dude, it's going to be the RO. So, I'm going to have suspended. you... suspended. Okay, I'm just going to have you put your wallet up there for me on the, on the yeah, dash, okay? Absolutely. All right. I don't want to lose this piece. No, that's okay. You can leave that up there, too. Okay. Now, you said you took methadone. When was the last time you took methadone? I just took it. I just took my dose. When was that? What's, um, what's like, an hour ago this morning? Like an hour ago. An hour ago. Do you take it every day, usually? Do you usually... I'm going to have you just... Usually, the, you can yes, put those I in your car. Them every day. Here, I can take your, your sunglasses. No, I don't want people noticing me right now. My daughter goes to school right here. I haven't taken my medicine or anything, so. Ready? Have we? Have you been drinking anything today? No. No alcohol, nothing like that. No, but I have uh, my methadone. Your methadone? Okay. Have we yeah. done any other drugs or anything like that? No. No. no I'm a uh, oh, weed. Weed? You weed. smoked weed? Yes. Okay. And you, what, how long ago was that? That was uh, 8 o'clock. I had a This trip. morning or last yep. night? I got a med trip. A med trip? Okay. A med trip how much, over. How much, did you, how much did you smoke? Uh, or were they edibles? Joint. Less than a joint? Yeah. Okay. Since Morissette seems to be having trouble and because she drove her daughter to the school, the officers want to see how she does on field sobriety tests. Right away, Morissette has a lot of excuses for why she might not perform well. Now, would you mind uh, performing the field sobriety tests for me? I need to, listen, I need to make sure that you're okay to drive. Yes, I will. So you'd be, you'd be willing to do that for me? Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to have you take your sunglasses off, okay? And you can just put them right up here for me, okay? All right. All right, and I'm going to have you step right back here with me. All right, and I'm just gonna have you turn around for for quick question. Oh, oh I don't, I don't want to turn fall. around. I just need to make sure you have no weapons on you. Okay, That's all. No. You don't have anything on you, do you? No. All right, I'm gonna have you turn around for me. All right, I'm gonna have you take one step closer to me, okay? All right, actually, I'm gonna have to take one more. Two days, you're gonna start testing. All right, I'm gonna have you stand with your feet together and your arms at your sides, okay? Can you put your feet together just like mine? Um, I'm not Perfect. really Perfect. Sure Perfect. Okay. okay. So I just want you to do the best you can, okay? So yeah. I have a couple questions for you, okay? Do you wear glasses or contacts? I do not, but I have eye light sensitivity. Eye light sensitivity? Yes. Okay. Um, are, you, are you a diabetic? I am not. You're not a diabetic? Well, I'm pre-diabetic. I don't no, really You're know. not diagnosed with diabetes? Not yet. Okay. Um, are you injured in any sort of way? Yes. What, what injuries? My back from my shoulders down to okay. my 
in my bottom. Okay. I was just recently in a car accident. You were? Okay. Yeah. Um, any injuries diagnosed by, like, a doctor or anything yes. like that? What, do you, what, what were they, if you don't mind me asking? My, I, I have... I'm sorry, I don't have the official. It's okay. It's okay. Diagnosis. Does it prohibit you from from walking in a straight line? Yes, it prohibits it, me from walking in a straight line, sitting, sitting too long, okay. areas like that. Okay, so the only thing I'm going to ask, okay, is just do the best you can, okay? And, and right. that'll all be taken yeah, into consideration. I already know this. So okay. I, yeah. Okay. All right, so stand with your feet together, okay, and your arms at your sides, okay? I don't want you to move from this position unless I instruct you to do so, okay? okay. Do you understand? Sorry about that. I want you to look at the tip of my finger, right here, okay, and I want... The sun is right there, so it's affecting... Here, I'll tell you what, I'm going to have you stand right there for me, okay? Is that better? Because the sun's back there? Yes. All right. The officer first has Morissette follow her finger with her eyes without having to move her head or neck. When they move on to the exercises involving movement, Morissette struggles. All right, so I just want you to put your right foot right in front of your left foot. All right, that's okay. That's okay. Um, so what I'm going to have you do, I'm going to have you take a step towards me, okay? I'm gonna have you stand with your feet together. Okay, I'm gonna have you keep On your- the line. It's okay, the line okay. doesn't matter for this one, okay? I'm gonna have you keep your arms at your sides, okay? And I don't want you to move from this position unless I instruct you to do so, okay? Do you understand? Yeah. All right, when I tell you to begin, you're gonna lift a foot of your choosing approximately six inches off the ground, okay? okay? I want you to keep your arms at your sides. You're gonna keep the sole of your foot parallel with the ground, okay? So what that means is the sole, the bottom of your foot is to be flat with the ground. I don't want it pointed up or down or anything like that, okay? Okay. And that's so, the one that's lifted. Yep, yep, okay. the one that's lifted, yep. Okay. So when you lift that foot up, I want you to look down at the toe of your lifted foot, okay? So if you pick up your right foot, you're going to look down at your right your right toe, okay? Okay. Okay? Um, and you're going to count out loud 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and so on and so forth until I tell you to stop. Okay. Okay? So it's going to look something like this, okay? So you're going to keep both your legs straight, keep your arms at your sides, lift the foot of your choosing approximately six inches off the ground. Okay. Okay? Keep the foot parallel to the ground, so 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Again, looking at the toe of your foot, okay. of your Can raised you foot. Okay, move your hat a little bit? For so what? I can see your eyes. So my eyes were just, my eyes were looking down at my toes. Okay. That's all. The raised foot. That's all. That's all. It's the only place it was looking. Okay. Okay. I did as you requested. See all right. Do you understand? So I don't want you to I, stop. I believe so. Yes. Okay. Do you want me to explain it? To the eye can, yes. Do you want me to explain it one more time? So no. you, so you have it. But I do need to figure out which foot I have best that's, balance on. That's okay. Right now. That's okay. So give me one second. Okay, and then I'll tell you to begin. Okay. So again, don't stop until I tell you to stop, okay? All right. You may begin. Whoa, I'm not beginning. I'm trying to figure out which side I'm going to be starting or on. Okay. That's what I just said. Okay, see, okay, try. Okay, that's fine. Go for it. Go, go ahead. Okay. All right, I'm sure you stand them right there for one second. As the officer goes to confer with a colleague, another officer tries to keep Morissette calm. You're, you're alright. No, I know I'm not. Okay. We're trying to figure it out. Because I'm not supposed to be, I just took off, I need to speak to my lawyer. Okay. Yeah, you have that opportunity. Okay, so when? Are you coming from work? Are you work at Herbs or no? No. Oh. I'm coming from home. I'm suspended. Okay. Suspended driving? Uh, yes. Okay. And I got Veo to drive me to the methadone clinic. Okay. Which I'm only on 30 milligrams. Okay. And then I came here. Okay. I'm tired. I I'm exhausted. I've I been you. going through nonsense. Okay. So, yeah. And there's a lot of things that affect this. And I already know what you guys are going to do. It's embarrassing. I okay. want to get out of here. When the officer returns, it's not good news for Morissette. So I'm just going to go over here for me, okay? Yeah. Right here, right here, right here. Okay. All right, I'm going to have you just face that way. Face, face yeah, your car. Put me in the handcuff. I'm going to have you face your car, okay? Face your car for me. We're going to roll up your sleeves, okay? You said you take methadone. Is it, per, is it prescribed for you? Yes. It is? Okay, did you take your prescribed amount? You did? And you haven't drank in or anything else like that? You said you smoked some weed a little bit ago, though? Yeah. Okay. Where's the, where are the keys? The end of the I'm not sure exactly where they are. They might be Is it okay if I look for them? We need them for the... Yeah.
Right, maybe just take one step back for me, okay? Morissette's car is pushed to start, so there's no key in the ignition. The officers hope to find the keys before the tow truck comes. But Morissette seems to be having more and more trouble communicating. Okay, wait, I'm just gonna check your pockets one more time. I don't, I don't think I missed it, but... They're not in okay. there. They're okay. in my black coat pocket. Black coat right pocket? Part. Okay. Okay. Um, can you listen? I'm listening. You said black coat pocket on the right hand side? No. Okay. Black hand coat. The, black, the right side has a hole in it. Okay. It goes forever. Oh, did it fall in the hole maybe? maybe. Okay. Okay, I'll check. Eventually, the officers find the set of keys and the car is taken to impound where Morissette is then taken to booking. Morissette was charged with DUI, operating a motor vehicle on a suspended license, and risk of injury to a child. She's expected back in a Connecticut courtroom later this month. Next, we're in Flagler County, Florida, where deputies have gotten reports of a woman driving dangerously. Just calling in regards to um, your call of a reckless driver a couple hours ago. Oh, yeah, the girl with the baby. You just yeah. kept seeing this white Chevy Cruze, right? I gave the license plate to the 911 operator. Yeah. And she was just, like, swerving all over the place. She almost hit multiple cars. She was, like, driving around people and then getting right back behind them. Like, she just seemed like she was really under the influence. And at one point, we even got past her and I rolled down my window and I asked her if she was okay and I was like do you need me to call you an uber and she was like I'm just driving and then I noticed there was a baby in the back seat like in a car seat it's July 2023 deputies spot the car which is now jutting up out of a ditch onto the side of a road they ask the driver Aisha Cameron what's going on Hang on. I was trying to pull over because I had to change my baby pamper I was trying to change my baby's pamper, and I don't know, I was just trying to pull over to change his pamper, and then I thought this was a side road, so I could change his pamper, and it's not. <laughs> Let's wait right here. He's checking on him, okay? okay? Where are we coming from tonight? Oh, I'm going to my house, but I had to pay, change his pamper. Okay. But okay. I thought this was a side road, so I could change his pamper. I got you. The two deputies then find a two-year-old boy in the back seat of the car, not buckled into his car seat. Is that mama? Is that mama? Why don't y'all, I smelled it whenever I talked to her for a minute. Why don't y'all start fields? He's gonna take them. That's fine. Um, I don't know if we're gonna call this a crash. Could she hit anything? If she just dipped through the ditch. I would, um, I would I'll sit tight with her. The baby, you guys want to take him? Yes. Hey, Bubba, you want to go to him? Hey, man, what's your name? Oh, goodness. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to hang on to him just for a second. Obviously, we're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. They need to talk to you about an issue that okay. they're having. And, uh, no yeah. problem. We'll go from there, you can your hand. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right, ma'am. So we received a call, um, a few calls about the way you were driving, okay? And... Our corporal was able to pull up behind you and observe some of your driving pattern. Mm -hmm. And along with the driving pattern, and then when you pulled over the side of the road, I understand we couldn't see in the ditch, okay? Yeah. I... But, with, mm -hmm. but with all of that combined, mm -hmm. okay, we are going to ask for you to um, participate in some field sobriety okay. exercises okay. just to make sure everything's okay and, okay. and, okay. and we're going to go from there, okay? Yes. okay. All right. And you're willing to participate in the field sobriety yes, exercises? Mm -hmm. okay. Despite being friendly and cooperative with them, the deputies don't believe Cameron performed very well during these tests, so they take her into custody. All right, ma'am. Just step to the front of that car for me, please. Put your shoes back on. Can I hold it? Just give us one now? second. I, I know you oh, want to hold your baby. I guess you. I guess you. Right here to the front of the see. car. Got a bug on your car. All right, ma'am. We got one more exercise for you, okay? okay? Just take both your hands out to the side, okay? And you turn around. All right, place both your hands behind your back, okay? I'm going to jail. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Put your hands together like you're praying, okay? Being placed under arrest or suspicion of DUI, okay? Who's the, who's the closest family to come pick up your son? Well, 
Uh, Did anybody in Benal, anybody in Palm Coast, anybody? I got, I'm not, I'm not tripping. No, um, you're good. I'm just going to walk these. So we just don't want them to switch down on you. Yeah. Hurt you. Um, I got my dad, but they're in Sanford. I have people in Palacca. If you give me my phone, I can call them. Okay. Do you All trust right. the people in Palacca with yeah, your song? Yeah, 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 yeah. I just don't want him to, you know, yeah. trip up. Oh, this is a long day. An investigation found Cameron's blood alcohol level was 0.15, almost two times the legal limit to drive. She was charged with child neglect with great bodily harm and DUI. She's due in court in April. Next, we head to DeLand, Florida, where this mom's actions absolutely stunned local police. Officers responded to a bar around 2 in the morning on October 2023. So we've got a little girl inside. And um, her mom was here earlier. Okay. She looks just like her mom, which is like immediately when she came in. She came in after we closed. She walked up to the door and she was immediately welcomed because like, why is there a little kid here? Because I, I actually got under my seat and I was like, who the f brought their kid to a bar this thing? And I realized she's just missing. She just doesn't know where her mom is. The officers then speak with a seven-year-old inside the bar where staff has set her up with french fries and apple juice. She tells the officer she was asleep in a car in the parking lot, but when she woke up, her mom wasn't around. You said you walked from your car. Yeah, because um, she, I fell asleep during it and then she had a bed there ever since. Because we um, got there and like, kept and then, and then I, my mom said it wouldn't be long, and then she, um, after like five to ten minutes, she, she just haven't came back. Okay. The officers start calling the girl's mom, identified as Veronica Elliott, and searching the area to try to find her. Around four hours later, Elliott suddenly wakes up to police in a dark parking lot. 6.30 in the morning. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Kind of, kind of an issue. Yeah. You see where we're coming from? Absolutely. So we need to talk, and I've got two detectives on the way, I think, actually. So. The officer's anger is palpable on the body camera video. <coughs> she, uh, was heading back to her car to get her dog. Where from? Um, from another car. Which car? Um, over there. You realize it's 6 30 in the morning, right? I, I do now. And you realize that your daughter, seven? Yes. Seven years old, has been by herself with us for four. Elliot says she had been asleep in another car that looked very similar to hers on the other side of the gravel lot. She tries to explain how the situation unfolded, but can't seem to remember much. Were you in the car alone? So, wait, you were in the car alone? Yes. Whose car is it? I have no idea. Why are you in someone's car you don't even know? I have, I have no idea. You understand how this looks, right? I do. What's your uh, drug of choice? My, my drug of choice is alcohol, but like, I, I, I don't know how I ended up in the car. I just woke up in the car, honestly. How'd you end up here? Um, I, I came here to meet friends. Yeah. So, like, all I, all I know is I, I came here to meet friends, um, and then I, I woke friends? up in the car. Yeah, Renan. I, I came here to meet my friend Renan, and then I woke up in that car. That's all I know. I, I, I really didn't mean to meet, leave my seven-year-old alone in the, in the car. I would never do such a thing. I mean, her, right. her, her dad mm. died last year. He was murdered. He was stabbed in, in, in the in the heart. Um, like I would never try to leave my seven-year-old alone. So, when you met your friends here, Renan. Yes. When you met Renan here, did you go into the bar? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Did you have a drink? Yes. What was the last thing you remember? The last thing I remember is meeting my friend Renan here and then having a drink, and that's it. But like, I mean. I'm not an alcoholic, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, 
I can hold my drink. Like, I'm, I'm 35 years old. You know what I mean? Like, that was probably, like, my third drink. You know what I mean? So, um, it, it shouldn't have knocked me out. But you I feel... don't know why I was in that car. Now, I'm not a woman, and yeah, I don't like, know how things yes, are. I understand. Do you feel like maybe you were violated in any way? I don't know. Like, I woke up in a car that wasn't mine. I woke up in a situation where I, I didn't know where I was at. Were um, your clothes on? My clothes were on, yes. Um, my clothes were buttoned, yes. Um, but, um... I don't know how I ended up like this. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it shouldn't have ended up like this. Like, I've never been in a situation. Oh, you're right. Like it shouldn't have ended up like this. Right. Right. Also, well, probably shouldn't have come up here with your seven year old. Right. Well, I just came up here to, to, to say hi to my friend, have a drink, and then leave. But, like, obviously, it didn't turn out that way. You know what I mean? So, right. you said you had three drinks? So. Yes. What is it that you drink? Um, I drink beer. Yes. So I had two beers um, before I came here. I mean, I, I had a beer when I got here. So, yeah. I, I don't know how I got from two beers before here and then one beer and here. While the officers are concerned about whether Elliot may have been drugged, they're more concerned about her daughter. We're not around here because right. a seven-year-old was left by herself to walk into a bar of strangers right. who could have been the most god-awful people on the planet, but thankfully they've been nothing but angels the right. entire time. Yes, they have devoted their time since she came in the bar to make sure that this traumatic experience mm -hmm. does not become a severely traumatic experience. Yes, sir. Okay? I understand. People in there were nice. Right. Had they not been nice, somebody could have been like, you know what, I'm going to help you find your mom. Come get in my car. Let's right. go. You know what? Forever. Then you never see your daughter again. Yes, sir. Probably sold on a black market to become a, a, a hot <laughs> or a freaking, you know, a slave Anything. of some sort. Yeah. You know, or dead. Yes, sir. We could have just found her in that ditch down there. Right. Where we were looking for you. I mean, this is ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. this is horrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got a bunch of parents out here. These All these cops yeah. are parents out here. And... I'm talking, oh, yeah, we're mad. mad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, I certainly understand. I, I don't know how it got to us. It's three years. Whatever, three years. Kid could have been taken. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Six hours. I mean, three years. I, I don't know. Well, it was worth it. Oh, no, it wasn't. At all. Well, at least she's okay. Yeah. At least your daughter's smart. She that's, went all I, bar. that's all I hear about. We thought you were dead. Okay. Yeah, we thought you were dead. Straight up. We had a dog tracking for you. We we're like, she's in a ditch somewhere. She's got to be because no sane person your that's not the victim of a crime. 2 a.m. asking where mom is. Right. <laughs> yeah. This is ridiculous. Here, so I have no idea. Elliot was then arrested and charged with neglect of a child. The seven-year-old was taken in by Child and Family Services. Elliot has entered a not guilty plea and has her next pretrial hearing in April 2024. So we're going to get back to after hours in just a second, but I want to thank a really proud sponsor of Law and Crime. It's Morgan & Morgan specifically for sponsoring this episode of After Hours. I mean, this show... It proves how scary the world can be. And let's say, unfortunately, you're ever injured. You can turn to Morgan & Morgan and submit an injury claim in eight clicks or less. You don't have to leave your couch. You can do it all on your cell phone. And this claim, it could be worth millions of dollars. In the past couple of months, Morgan & Morgan saw verdicts of $12 million in Florida, $26 million in Philadelphia, and $6.8 million in New York. Mind you, that's considerably higher than the highest insurance offer for these accidents. Also, and this is pretty cool, the fee is absolutely free unless you win. So you can submit a claim, see if you have a case, and then communicate with your legal team all from your phone. They've completely modernized the personal injury process. So to do so, all you have to do is go to forthepeople.com backslash after hours or click the link in the description and in the pinned comments.
Next, we're in Byron, Georgia, where a driver hit multiple people and other vehicles with her car during a chase, all with a child in the back seat. It's July 2022, and police have gotten a call about a dangerous driver weaving in and out of lanes and driving on the wrong side of the road. Video shows police officers and Good Samaritans boxing the SUV in at an intersection. They put down stop sticks under the tires and try to talk to the driver, who we know is Sierra Hibbert. But instead of cooperating, Hibbert drives the SUV forwards and backwards, hitting several cars, a police officer, and some witnesses. Get out the car! Get out! Get out! Tires are flat! You can hear the squeal of the tires and the revving of engines as Hibbert tries to get away from law enforcement. She's not going to make it far. But the officer's prediction is wrong. Hibbert takes off again. They're finally able to get her to stop, and officers move in to arrest her, while a witness runs up to check on the child in the back seat. You can hear the witness screaming at Hibbert on body camera footage, but Hibbert insists she didn't do anything wrong. I know I'm buckled, sir. I know I'm buckled, sir. Yeah. You just tried to kill 10 people. No, I did not, sir. Alex, push no. Sir, stop. Sir! I didn't do it. Stop. You have to. Why have you done? Stop. Stop. I did it. I did it. Do it. It won't fit. It won't fit. Get it. Get Make it, it fit. No, <laughs> Three police cars. No, I did not and a couple of others. About three stop signs ago and started saying that I was driving recklessly and I was not. Well, I you could have killed that kid. I didn't do anything. Yes, you did. You almost killed three people. Stop. What did I do? Don't even ask how. Don't even ask how. Stop. 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 Yeah, no, we're good. Thank you. Hibbert was arrested and booked into the Peach County Jail, although the exact charges she faces remains unclear. Now we're in Fairborn, Ohio, where authorities are responding to what they're calling one of the worst child endangerment cases they've ever seen. Officers responded to an apartment complex in January 2024 after an anonymous caller said a three-year-old was having trouble breathing and needed to go to the hospital. When the officers arrived, no one answered the door, but it was unlocked. And what they found inside was horrid. Fairborn Police. Fairborn Police Department. Oh, she's still breathing. She's still breathing. Let's go. Let's go. She's still breathing. Get a light. Oh, yeah. Let me get out of the way. It didn't look like it. I'd say just pick up and look good. Yeah. Yeah. Two ninety five. All right. 
Excuse me. Call code enforcement. Have them respond, please. Who lives here? We haven't even got that far. The emaciated little girl was laying on the floor in the back bedroom, surrounded by garbage, animal feces, and dead rodents. She was then rushed to a hospital. Police determined the child's mother, Ray Bia Mobley, was the one who was called 911 and then left the home. She eventually returned and was arrested. Well, right now we're trying to figure out a whole bunch of things, right? A whole bunch of details. Um, you mean if I sit? My back is killing um, me. What do you, you want? Just sit down. <laughs> you can have we're, a seat in we're, the back of the Yeah, we're gonna have, you can have a seat in the back of my car. Um, are you guys taking me? What's that? Are you guys taking me? Uh, yeah, we are. Okay. Okay. So Can let's. My stuff to him, then, I'll, I'll take care of that. Let's uh, let's walk in the front of my car. All right. An officer put Mobley in the squad car, handcuffing her hands in front of her after she complained about back pain. She then questions the officer about her child's well-being. Do you know anything about her condition? If she's okay? Um, I do not. Um, right now, you're being arrested for child endangering um, yes. at a felony level. Okay. At a felony level. Yes. Um, we um, are still, we, we're doing our thing that we have to do, okay? Uh, as Detective Whitaker mentioned, he will be in to speak with you. Uh, right now, we're going to go to our jail in Fairborn and uh, process on those charges and then um, go from there. And as we go through these, this process, I'll try to answer any questions I can best of my ability, okay? Officials say the little girl weighed only 16 pounds. A healthy three-year-old weighs between 26 and 38 pounds, according to the CDC. The mom reportedly told police that she suffers from PTSD and is unable to take care of her daughter or the apartment complex because she sleeps all day. The apartment was later condemned by the city. Mobley was charged with child endangerment, and as of this recording, she's locked up in a jail on a $200,000 bond. Now we're in Georgia, where a mother's in big trouble with the law after police found five unbuckled children in the back of her car after she led them on a high-speed chase down an interstate in the rain and going more than 100 miles an hour. It happened in December 2022. Deputies say they initially pulled over the car Gloria's Harrison was driving because she didn't have her headlights on despite the rain. Harrison's passenger owned the car. He was wanted out of another Georgia county for a probation violation, and police in Los Angeles wanted him on firearms charges. But when the passenger realizes the jig is up, he wants the driver to take off. Harrison then guns it and deputies follow in hot pursuit. Dashboard camera video from the deputy's cruiser shows the Dodge Charger crashing into another vehicle on the interstate. The deputy tries to pin Harriston in, but she speeds off again. Authorities say she topped out at speeds of 124 miles an hour. Eventually, another deputy was able to do a pit maneuver on the Charger, causing it to spin off into a grassy area. But the passenger isn't done. He gets out and makes a run for it before he's finally tackled to the ground. Officers take Harrison into custody without further incident. They then find Harrison's five children in the car. You guys okay? Yeah. Next week. Next week. No, Is that the one who's driving? No, Okay, hold on one second. I'm gonna make sure, and then that she doesn't want to take it. Then do that. Um, we'll get your grandma. Okay, we'll get your grandma to come pick y'all up. Deputies say the kids, ages 4, 5, 9, 11, and 12, were all wedged into the back seat. None of them were wearing a seatbelt. Fortunately, none of the children were hurt. Investigators also found a loaded gun and drugs in the car. Harrison was charged with aggravated assault, hit and run, fleeing, drug possession, cruelty to children, and child safety seat violations.
We end today's after hours in New Mexico, where it's a mom-to-be who ended up in cuffs. Police stopped a car with a female driver and a male passenger, who they say sped by them going more than 100 miles an hour. When the officer approaches the car, the woman is looking for her license. The passenger then asks if he can speak with the officer off to the side. I'm sorry, man. Um, she's not under my insurance, but she's driving me home. And... I've been having a hard week, well, a hard two weeks because I haven't had any jobs that came in. Uh -huh. And um, do you do you mind if I take her? Sure. If I'm being completely honest, she's just driving me around, so I can feel better about myself, but. I haven't had any jobs because I got stopped in August and no other mechanic shop would take me. I've been seriously struggling, that's why she took my brother to drop me off. She dropped him off and she was just bring me home, but um, that's my girlfriend and she's just pregnant and the hormones kicked in and I was saying some other things that made her a little emotional and she sped up and I was telling her to slow down, but she didn't listen, so it was all my fault. Because she's pregnant and the hormones take over, you know. So, I mean, if there's any issues, then I'll take full responsibility for it because... The officer hears him out, then has the driver step out of the car. Despite the passenger wanting to take all the responsibility, that's not going to happen. Once he starts speaking with the woman who's not identified, he learns she's been drinking. Go ahead and have a seat back in the passenger seat. Um, did she let her go? Did I let her go? No, not for 108. No. 108? Yeah. How far along are you? Um, honestly, <laughs> I really don't know, but they're thinking about six, seven months. How much does he have to drink? Me? Yeah. Oh, him? Um, just a can and a half, and that's it. Did you have anything to drink? Today? I had just a can, and that's it. But how long ago was that? Uh, probably about half an hour ago. Yeah. Uh, smash the woman then makes an astonishing statement. I, I, I just don't have that maternal attachment to this to, to this pregnancy the way I did my first two, yeah. I want to make sure that you're good to drive. What I'm going to ask you to do is go ahead and stand right here on your back bumper for me. Okay. The officer runs through the typical field sobriety exercises, which she completes wearing large, fluffy bedroom slippers. During the tests, the woman changes the number of drinks she had from one to two, but the officer suspects this is much more serious. Okay. You definitely have something to drink. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Question is... I have a portable breath test, all right? It's not admissible in court. It doesn't go against you whatsoever, mm -hmm. all right? Just to verify your story of going from one to two. Yeah. All right? Would you be willing to... Yeah, of course. Okay. Hang out right there. Let me do that. Okay. What I need you to do is take a deep breath in and blow like you're going to blow up a blow until you pop. Blow, 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 blow. All right, stop.
maybe because I haven't drank in a while. <laughs> Is that why I saw what I saw? Yeah. That and I had a lot of going through me because... You mentioned that. Yeah, because there's a possibility that he could be the dad and... Somebody the, else could be a dad? Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. Here's the deal. Mm -hmm. You've had way too much to drink to be driving. Yeah. You know that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you pass me at 108. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're unable to maintain your lanes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And everything that I saw says it wasn't one, it wasn't two, mm -hmm. probably more than that. How much did you guys actually have to drink? Well, like I said, honestly, I haven't drank in a while. Uh, I'd say probably about two to three months. So I had um, two smashes, and that was about it. And about it? Yeah, that was about it. So there was other things other than the smashes? Um, just like the, like the, what do you call those? Little four ounce kind of beers, mm -hmm. and that was it. So you had beer on top of everything else? Yeah. On the in the field breath test, the driver blew a point one three. The officer arrested her and booked her into jail. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Long Crime After Hours is written and produced by Savannah Williamson. Video editing is done by the Mikey Dininger. I'm Sam Goldberg. We'll see you next week. No. No, I'm a uh, oh weed. I weed? Smoke weed? You smoked weed? Yes.